Good morning, welcome everyone. And this is the Wednesday, January 2nd, 2019. Board of Commissioners meeting for the town of Nags Head is called to order. If you'll please join me in a brief moment of silence. And now, if you will please stand as you're able and join me in the Pledge, pledge of Allegiance. Good morning, welcome everyone. And this is the Wednesday, January 2nd, 2019. Board of Liberty Thank you. Um, the first item on our agenda would be the adoption of the agenda, and a motion would be in order. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second to adopt the agenda. All, of, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Uh, the next item on our agenda are the recognitions. Cliff? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I'd first like to call on Public Works Director Ralph Burrill to introduce a new employee in the Water Department. Good morning, Mayor, Commissioners. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Uh, it's my, my pleasure this morning to introduce Alan Beatty. Uh, Alan, um, it's a little kind of interesting. Alan was born in Montana, Libby, Montana. Moved here after high school. Kind of moved around a little bit, went to Florida, was here, went to Florida, went to Virginia. Came back, uh, met his wife, Shannon. Uh, they now have a daughter living in Kill Level Hills. Their daughter's name is Caitlin. And Alan enjoys playing music, and actually he's in a, he's in a little band that plays around. Uh, the Outer Banks. So, without any further ado, Alan, thank you for being with us. Thank you. Interim Fire Chief Shane Height has two recognitions this morning. Good morning, Mayor and Commissioners, and I appreciate you allowing me to speak this morning and to introduce Master Firefighter Diego Dayan. Come on up, Diego. On his 20 years with the town. Um, Diego, of course, lives in Nags Head with his fiance, Jenna, um, her daughter, Maya, and his son, Tyler. Diego is a master firefighter, but he also serves as the acting officer in the absence of the captain as needed. Um, Diego has numerous certifications, fire inspector two, fire officer one. He's a certified fire life safety educator. He's also a child seat technician, um, <coughs> helping to put in child seats for those who are unable to, do th uh, unable to do so or need some help with that. And he's a North Carolina certified driver operator. He's taken a very special, special interest over the years in rope rescue, and he's worked to establish training for incidents that may involve high angle rescues the, at places such as the, the, the rope park in town or confined space rescues. Uh, he's also been one of the first firefighters who was able to complete the master firefighter career progression step. So we appreciate that, and he works very hard in that capacity. Uh, Diego, we appreciate the, the knowledge and the skills that you have. And we look forward to many more years with you in the town and in the fire department. I just want to say real quickly with regard to that um, 
uh, helping folks with their child safety seats that um, within the last week or so, I had a Facebook friend as I was scrolling through the feed who said that they, they live in another municipality, but they had stopped at the Nags Head Fire Station, gotten their seat put in, and were extremely complimentary of our staff um, and how helpful that they were. So thank you very much for that in particular. Sir, you're welcome. Next, I'd re like to recognize Fire Captain Chip Holcomb on his retirement. Um, Chip tells us it was kind of tough today to put on pants instead of shorts, and <laughs> I think definitely probably 50 degree threshold. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Chip, of course, began his career with the town in 1989. He started as a volunteer with the Nagshead Volunteer Fire Department um, after coming to us, I think, from Kildover Hills as a firefighter. Um, but then in August, he was hired as a full-time firefighter. <clears throat> Back at the days of, of Station 20 and across from Jockey's Ridge, I think you were there for a while and maybe one of the no, first. Just uh -huh. just maybe one of the first 10 career staff, if I will. Yes. Okay. So definitely a long history that we're, we're, we're proud of with the town. Um, throughout his career, he's attended many classes with the state of North Carolina and through the National Fire Academy. Um, he's a certified fire instructor and a level three fire inspector. In May of 2000, Chip was promoted to the position of fire captain which is the same location he retired at. And again, a, an outstanding career with the town. Um, of course, many changes took place once he was here. Um, additional staffing, the staffing of Station 21, um, and I, I think Chip, we owe a lot to Chip, and he was, we definitely have learned a lot from you over the years, Chip, and we appreciate it. And I think everybody would say that, and I can speak for everybody when I say that. So again, congratulations on your retirement. I look forward to it and look forward to coming back around. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Congratulations. We're going to take a picture right after this. Thank you. I'm going to ask the board to join me if they would for a photograph with Captain Holden. <laughs> No, no, I'm just very bad news. <laughs> the um, next item on our agenda are public hearings, and I will, oh, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm skipping over a bunch of stuff here. The next, <laughs> the next item on our agenda is public comment. Mr. Lighty. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, at this time, the board will receive uh, uh, comments from members of the public. Uh, the board does this at its regular meeting every month. This is an opportunity for members of the public to address the board regarding matters uh, that interest them or that might interest the board. It is not an opportunity for dialogue with the board or individual board members. The board rarely responds to any comment during the public comment session, but anyone who wishes to address the board may do so. If you will please approach the podium, tell us who you are and where you live, and then address your uh, comments to the whole board. So who wants to go first? I'm sure there's somebody here for public comment. <laughs> Mayor Edwards? Okay. All right, then. Well, if there is no comment from the public, at this time we'll conclude the public comment and the uh, meeting may proceed. Great. Thank you very much. The next item on our agenda is the consent agenda. Um, and a motion would be in order. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you very much. Now we're at the public hearings. <laughs> Mr. Lighty. 
Yes, sir, Mr. Mayor. At this time, we will begin the first public hearing, which is a public hearing to consider the adoption of resolutions that would authorize the town to enter into an installment purchase contract in an amount not to exceed $800,000 to finance the cost of the Doug Ramali Fire Station 16 HVAC renovations, as well as certain stormwater construction projects. Um, at this time, we will begin with the presentation of the uh, <coughs> details regarding this transaction, I assume, by from um, Deputy Town Manager Andy Garman. Yes, th thank you. Um, this is obviously, uh, these are several projects we've been working on uh, over the past year. Uh, these were approved by the board during the CIP and last year's budget. Um, we have uh, combined these these projects together in order to submit a, a financing request to the local government commission. Uh, the board is being asked to uh, conduct uh, several different activities as part of this one item. Um, the first is the public hearing on the financing resolutions uh, and we have two separate resolutions and I'll have uh, finance officer Amy Miller come up and give a brief overview of what those resolutions uh, entail. Good morning, Mayor, Commissioners, Happy New Year. Um, this is a requirement by the Local Government Commission, um, first of all, the public hearing, and we are taking this to the Local Government Commission because um, any real property improvement that we get a loan for requires their approval. Um, and so the first resolution is authorizing us to take this to the LGC for approval. And the second resolution is the the banking bid that um, we are recommending, which is BB&T, for five years at 3.11%. And I know um, originally we did an up to 800,000 amount, but the actual banking resolution and what we will take to the LGC is the actual amount that we are borrowing, which we are asking for 705,000. Um, that's based on um, a 20% contingency on the stormwater project based on plus the base bid, as well as a slight contingency for the HVAC project. Um, and I did reach out to the LGC about the contingencies, and they said that the 20% would be um, acceptable as far as their approval. So um, I think everything is ready to go to them for their February meeting once um, the board hopefully approves these actions. All right, does the board have any questions for Ms. Miller? <laughs> or for Mr. Garman, for that matter? None? All right. Thank you very much. All right. Would any member of the public care to comment on this, uh, on these two proposed resolutions? <clears throat> if so, this is your opportunity. No public comment? Does the board wish to receive any other information about this before the public hearing concludes? <coughs> All right. At this time, we will, Andy, something else? Uh, the, um, the board will obviously consider the resolutions as one of the, the seven items um, included in the packet. And so we were, we were going to give presentations from other staff members on the individual items before they approved the resolutions. Oh, all right. Well, let's, let's hear from uh, those staff members then. Who's next? Um, I guess I can begin with the HVAC portion of this. Uh, we had worked with an engineer to develop plans to uh, renovate the HVAC system at Fire Station 16. Um, we've been working over the course of, of several months to receive bids on that project. Um, originally, this project was budgeted uh, around $40,000 uh, la during last year's budget. And after designing plans and receiving bids, we've, we've come to learn that it's substantially higher than that. Uh, the, the bids we've received are I believe the low bid is around $81,000 to do the work. Um, Town engineer David Ryan had a discussion with the project and the design engineer and the architect um, on Monday and learned that the, although the bids are higher than what was originally budgeted, that the scope of work is not um, out of line with the, the actual numbers that we're receiving in light of the fact that uh, there's certainly a substantial amount of work going on right now. Um, we've, we've received, uh, well, actually, we, we inquired with 
four separate local contractors about doing the work and none of those contractors have offered to bid on the project and so we've had to rely on two bids which were both out of town contractors. Um, it's replacing three separate units at the fire station and there's also some additional electrical work uh, that's taking place replacing an, or installing a, an additional sub panel and according to the design engineer that's a, probably about a twelve thousand dollar add-on to that project and so those are some of the explanations for the cost for this project and being what it is uh, so um, in your memo you had a summary of the different uh, groups we sent the bid request to and uh, we're, we're simply asking you to to look at the bid and authorize the town manager to enter into the contract uh, with uh, Piedmont contingent upon approval by the LGC of the financing. Okay. Thank you. All right, any questions for Mr. Garman regarding the, those projects or that project? All right. Next. Anything else? That's it. So at this time, maybe the board can go ahead and consider the, the uh, approval of the uh, contract contingent upon LGC financing. I have a question for you, Mr. Garman. When the contract was wrote, who, who put in a 60-day time frame on the contract to put in three additional HVAC systems in an open ceiling area of the fire department? Why such a long period is my question. 60 days? I, I believe we just felt like that was a reasonable period of, reasonable period of time to get the work done. Um, you know, I, I, usually our contracts include liquidated damages mm -hmm. uh, yeah, but in, the event, in yeah. the event that you don't get it done within that time period. And so we have to give people a reasonable time period. Otherwise, it'll be reflected in our bid price. Correct. And looking back and discussing this with many HVAC guys locally as well, uh, a unit should take no more than seven days. We're only putting in a few units, so would 30 days have been more accurate, if, especially if we're looking at liquidated damages? I mean, I, I think that r most people are going to want to get in and do the job and get done, and, and, and it will probably take certainly less than 30 days. I think we put the 60 days in there just to give ourselves and the contractor some cushion, because they may not start right away. Um, you know, they may have to demobilize from another job to mobilize to this job, and we just felt like the 60 days was a a reasonable period of time uh, in order to not scare them away with the liquidated damages. Well, I don't think they're scared at 82000 I mean, I think it's very inflated price. I wish we had more competition on the bids, <clears throat> and I'm, I'm disappointed in the fact that we didn't have any local bidding done on that. Yeah, we, we were certainly were, too. Are there any other questions for Mr. Garner? <clears throat> just curious, how far out of line was the other bid, just as a matter of comparison? Uh, I believe the other bid was about 8,000 more, 7,000 more. Than that. Yeah, 87 versus 81, I believe. All right, thank you. Both in the same town. Other questions? All right, Andy, do you have any other information to present regarding the two resolutions before the board adopts those, or do you want them to consider the contract? At this point, we would ask the board to consider the, the contract for the HVAC projects. And then I believe uh, David Ryan, the town engineer, was going to present the stormwater information and ask the board to go through those, those items. And then the resolutions would be at the end. Okay. All, right. All right. So if the board, so a motion to approve the um, proposed contract with that contractor would be appropriate at this time. Okay. Can we get a motion to that effect? Mayor, I make a motion that we accept the contract from Piedmont Service Group, an amount not to exceed $82,704. Okay. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Okay. I have a motion and a second. Further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. All right. Now, at this time, uh, uh, Mr. Ryan, I believe, will present some information regarding the stormwater project yes uh, good morning mr. mayor board of commissioners happy new year yeah. uh, I'm here to uh, give the board uh, an update and also we've got two items for uh, their consideration for the three stormwater projects that the town has been working on for the past several months 
On November 30th, the town advertised for bid for the three project areas uh, that uh, constitutes the Red Drum Ocean Outfall and upstream improvements um, in that area. Uh, also in the Nags Head Acre subdivision and the northeast section of the Vista Colony subdivision with the groundwater lowering pump project and project area number three here in the village at Nags Head uh, along South Virginia Dare Trail uh, between Mall Street and Epstein Street. On December 20th, the town received four competitive bids uh, for that scope of work. Uh, bids were received from Hatchell Concrete, Envirotech uh, Unlimited Construction Services, RPC Contracting, and Barnhill Contracting. Um, after review of the information that was submitted, it was determined that Hatchell Concrete had submitted the lowest responsive, responsible bid for uh, $514,000. $800. And so there are two motions that staff is asking for uh, for the board to consider. Uh, that is the notice of intent for the award of the bid to Hatchell Concrete for the amount of $514,800. And then the second motion would be uh, conditional uh, authorization for the town manager to execute the construction contract uh, with Hatchell Concrete. Um, contingent upon LGC financing. Be glad to ask any questions that the board has. Okay. All right, any questions for Mr. Ryan? Um, the lowest responsive bid was lower than the budget <laughs> for the project and lower, significantly lower than the other bids. Can you describe um, any follow up discussion you've had with that low bidder with regard to their ability and willingness to perform? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, there was a preliminary opinion of probable construction cost that was developed by the town's consulting engineer, Withers Ravenel, uh, on these three projects. Um, based upon the con conceptual plans, uh, that amount was $550,000 uh, for, uh, for the three projects. And then there was a supplemental opinion of prob probable construction cost once the final construction plans had been developed and that amount was $655,000. Uh, the Hatchell bid is significantly lower than the most recent um, opinion of cost and so we had uh, done an analysis on our, uh, at a staff level. We had consulted with Withers Ravenel to take a look at the deviation in pricing. Uh, there was a couple different areas uh, that we had noticed uh, based upon the other three bids that were submitted. Um, and there was a s significantly lower cost for project area number two in the Nagshead Acre subdivision in the groundwater pumping system, as well as excavation costs and asphalt pavement repair costs. Uh, we had then followed up with, the, uh, with Hatchell Concrete uh, to uh, speak about this matter with them, and they had determined that um, Yes, they were comfortable with the pricing and they could move forward with the scope of work um, as presented. Okay, all right, thank you. Any other questions for Mr. Ryan? All right, so uh, let me see if I get this right, Dave. At this time, I think you want the board to first issue the notice of intent uh, to uh, proceed with the contract with uh, Hatchell to, uh, contingent on LGC approval. Would that be the first action the board should take? That is correct. All right, so at this time, a motion to that effect would be appropriate. Okay, thank you. Can we get a motion? So moved. Uh, have a motion, is there a second? Second. Okay, have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Thank I you. Thank the uh, second motion would be to for the board to um, uh, authorize the town manager to proceed with execution of the contract again contingent on uh, LGC approval um, and uh, also approval by the town attorney. Okay. Can we get a motion to that effect? So moved. I have a motion. Is there a second? I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Yes. Commissioner uh, Cahoon. Did your motion include the f not to exceed the 514,000 whatever? Um, Does that include the uh, contingency? That is exclusive of contingency. That's exclusive of contingency, so no. 
my motion is not to not uh, not to exceed the 514 right because that does not include the contingency correct that is correct okay um, we I just I worry that there's going to be something in the ground that's not known and right we, we have an allowance right now that is built in along with the financing uh, to cover about 20 percent of the overall uh, contract amount for contingency so that that would be 514 plus approximately 20 percent for That's contingency correct. which is still significantly less than all of the other bids I agree I just I'd like to see a cap of some sort I don't like to see open-ended well, would it not be the cap plus the 514 plus a maximum of 20 percent it didn't say that's what we're requesting okay well can can the motion be modified to be 514 plus a 20 percent contingency happy to make that motion okay. okay your second still good for that yeah. okay. all right thank you so we have a motion and a second any further discussion all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Great. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Okay. So, so then that concludes the staff presentations, and the three remaining actions would be approval of the two separate resolutions, and then finally the budget amendment, which finance officer has included um, to, to, to authorize the, the funding. Okay. Thank you. All right, any further comment from anybody in the public uh, regarding these matters before we conclude the public hearing? All right, at this time we will conclude the public hearing on these matters and the board may deliberate on those resolutions and the budget amendment. Okay, thank you. Does anybody have any question or comment on the resolutions? First would be to apply to the, is the, um, is the resolution to apply to the LGC? Mayor, I have a motion. Okay, I'd like to you. make a motion approving the resolution authorizing the filing of an application for approval of a financing agreement authorized by North Carolina General Statutes 160A-20 to the LGC. Okay. Thank you, I have a motion, is there a second? We have a motion and a second to approve the application to the LGC. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Great. Thank you. Um, the next resolution is the resolution approving financing terms. The motion would be in order. I'd like to make a motion. Um, approving the resolution for the financing terms, uh, not to exceed 705,000. Okay, thank you. I have a motion, is there a second? Second. I have a motion and a second to approve the resolution approving financing terms in an amount not to exceed $705,000. Any further discussion? Thank you. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Is there any further business that's part of this item? Yeah, approving the budget uh, oh, I'm sorry, yes, there is, the budget amendment. <clears throat> so you have the budget amendment in your package. Um, and a motion would be in order. I'd like to make a motion to um, approve uh, budget amendment number seven. Okay, thank you. A motion, is there a second? Second. I have a motion and a second to approve the um, budget amendment number seven, which is in the amount of $705,000. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you very much. Now, is that the conclusion of the business for that item? Yes. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Okay, Mr. Lighty. Yes, sir. At this time, we'll proceed to the next uh, public hearing. This one is to consider a zoning ordinance text amendment that was submitted by Brian Rubino of Quibble and Associates on behalf of Miller's 
waterfront restaurants and tail of the whale restaurant to allow a new use docking facilities with transient boat slips in the C2 general commercial zoning district and in the commercial outdoor recreational uses overlay zoning district and we will begin by uh, receiving the staff's analysis presented by um, uh, Deputy Planning Director uh, Kelly Wyatt. Thank you. Good morning. Um, as you had noted, this is a text amendment request that's being brought forward by Brian Rubino of Quibble and Associates um, on behalf of Miller's Waterfront Restaurant um, as well as Tell the Whale Restaurant. The request is to amend the town code with regard to the C2 Zoning District and the Commercial Outdoor Recreation District uh, to allow for docking facilities in these areas. Um, currently, uh, any docking facility that's intended to be used by the general public or someone other than the landowner is considered a commercial marina and the town does not allow commercial marinas anywhere um, within the town limits. Uh, the proposed ordinance would define a pier with up to eight slips as a docking facility rather than a commercial marina and would allow the use under certain conditions that are specified in the, in, in the text amendment that's included. Um, the applicant has also proposed to clarify the difference between a docking facility and a commercial <coughs> marina. Um, commercial marina would constitute a facility with more than eight to accommodate more than eight boats um, and would eliminate the requirement that boats be moored, um, boats being moored do not have to be for the exclusive use of the landowner. Um, the town would continue to prohibit commercial marinas under the proposal and only allow these docking facilities as accessory uses to principal commercial uses. Um, the applicant has stated in his request that um, it's their intention that these slips would be utilized by restaurant patrons um, who own boats and would like to moor um, temporarily and safely at nav navigable established slips um, while they dine at the restaurants. The planning board and the board of commissioners discussed the use of transient boat slips um, back in 2017 and I've provided a lot of background history on that in your packet which I hope um, was helpful but sort of the condensed version of that is um, back in 17 the applicant had submitted a similar text amendment with the request for 10 slips again now they're requesting eight but at that time um, they were requesting 10 slips and that was going to be consistent with how CAMA defines a uh, marina and uh, during the process when we took this to the planning board um, back in 2017 we had discovered several minutes from back in the 90s where the board at that time was discussing commercial marinas um, as part of that we did note that the major concerns noted in the 90s um, pertaining to marinas were limiting recreational and or commercial boating in shallow near shore areas of the sound where boat traffic using traditional propellers may cause damage to the sound bottom, reducing conflicts between motorized and non-motorized water users which creates inherent safety hazards, and minimizing or controlling marinas that serve boat traffic in shallow areas of the sound um, which could present complications when siding these commercial facilities. Um, the planning board at that time asked staff to um, create some additional definitions which I've included in your package. Um, commercial marina, dry stack storage, things of that nature. Um, pier uh, was per we had drafted a definition, dock slip, commercial pier, and commercial marina. And um, after several months of discussing it, what the planning board decided in 2017 was to recommend adoption of the request as presented, making um, the town's definition of commercial marina consistent with CAMA's definition of commercial marina and allow the text amendment to have um, <coughs> 10 boat slips in the C2 and commercial outdoor recreation district. Um, 
So when this came before the Board of Commissioners in 2017, um, there was also a considerable, considerable amount of discussion, which was outlined in the minutes included. Um, but at uh, the first reading on August 2nd, 2017, the board had asked staff to provide some additional information. One of the pieces of that information is um, what's currently on your screen. The board had inquired about how many other facilities in town would be able to accommodate um, a, a pier and a marina um, with boat slips available. And as you can see, it appears that there's about 14 locations that could have taken advantage of the text amendment as it was presented um, in 2017. Uh, staff was also asked to review a carrying capacity study that was done in the 90s. And um, that was provided to the board as well. Um, when that came back to the board, the board voted three to one to deny the request for 10 boat slips. Um, the concern was that um, the number of activities concentrated in one area and uh, potential user conflicts. So um, now the applicant has come back before the board um, to request a different uh, text amendment. Now they are asking to redefine commercial marina to be not 10 slips, but um, greater than eight slips and eight slips or less would be categorized as a docking facility. Um, previously, staff had recommended denial of the request. Um, we felt like 10 was um, uh, too many boat slips to, per to allow, um, and at eight, staff also feels like um, we could not recommend approval of eight boat slips. Uh, we continue to recommend uh, four. If you are inclined to adopt the text amendment um, to accommodate four boat slips, um, that number was derived from that seems to be a, a logical number of slips that you could get from an L shape or a hammerhead um, pier to allow four. Um, uh, but that being said, we did take this to the <coughs> planning board um, for their review uh, November 20th of 2018, and they voted five to two to recommend adoption of the proposed zoning ordinance um, that would allow eight boat slips. Um, they removed the recommendation that it be within the C2 zoning district and limited that strictly to the commercial outdoor recreation overlay district. Um, staff also recommended it be considered as a conditional use and the planning board was agreeable to that and included that in their recommendation. Um, so there's quite a bit of history and a lot of information and I apologize if I skipped over something, but um, essentially the request is to allow up to eight boat slips um, as an accessory use for principal uses in the commercial outdoor recreation overlay district. Um, staff's recommendation would be no more than four slips planning board's recommendation um, was eight as a conditional use. I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. All right, are there any questions for Ms. Wyatt? Yes, Ms. Cahoon. Kelly, what would be the difference in the number of properties affected based on the planning board recommendation of commercial recreational overlay and C2? None, um, <laughs> zero. All right, thank you. Other questions? other questions for Ms. Wyatt? All right. Anything further, Kelly? No, sir. All right. Thank you very much. All right. At this time, would any member of the public care to comment on this proposed zoning ordinance text amendment? Mr. Edwards? Good morning, Mayor Cahoon and Commissioners. It's been a long time since I've been here, but I thought about Welcome coming back. back come back and, and talk about this this morning. I feel that we would, uh, I have a lot of reservations about this ordinance being uh, changed, being requested. 
actually approving this ordinance request would allow docking facilities as a permitted use in this C2 general commercial district and the commercial outdoor recreation use over Lake Zoning District. I think would be a serious error for that town. When our citizens met to discuss sea level rise and focus Nate had one of the overriding thoughts was to preserve our marshlands as a natural asset and as a barrier against the erosion of our south side shoreline. I must remind you, as always, approving this ordinance is not for two requests, but you have in front of you now but the possible 14 or more marinas. I oppose approval of this ordinance change for the following specific reasons. Number one, it violates our revised land use plan. As stated on page 316 of the Focus Nags Head Plan, LU8 reads in part, ensure proposals for future commercial uses in the Sound are not detrimental to the marsh, Sound bottom, and submerged aquatic vegetation. Compatible sound uses will not increase to bread it in the water and will maintain overall water quality. LU7 on the same page states review regulations in the ocean and sound waters overlay district to ensure proper use of the ocean and sound waters, including islands that adjoin the town, to ensure the continued scenic conservation and recreational value that these waters provide to the town its residents and its visitors and the surrounding area. In addition, LU7A states, review regulations for commercial boating and personal watercraft to maintain compatibility with adjacent uses and estuarine environment. On page 347 in summary, the plan states, the goal of the town is to maintain and improve estuarine water quality and natural functions while providing water-based recreation opportunities that do not compromise water quality. Again, on page 3-48, NR1, NR2, and NR4, all address protecting the nat natural estuarine soil shorelines. As you can see, the proposed ordinance change flies in face of these sections of the Focus Nags Head Plan docks and marinas that are five to 600 feet long, and, and that's not an arbitrary number. In 2017, Mr. Garman measured water depths, and it was out to 400 feet before we could, uh, the water depth would be enough to, for, for boat traffic. Uh, we would if I have piers that are five to 600 feet long to get the water depths needed for boat traffic, and it's certainly not what the plan talks about. I've witnessed that boat traffic in the area of the Sound stir up mud from the bottom and leave a muddy plume of water in their pathway <coughs> the boats is taken. In addition, destroying marshlands to build docks and walkways will destroy much of the existing marsh vegetation. And that brings me to number two, and that's flood water retardation. It is estimated that marsh vegetation can dissipate as much as 90% of the waste action energy. This is very easy to see if you consider the effects of the recent Hurricane Michael, which with no marsh barrier for Bay Drive and Kildevil Hills, the neighborhood was decimated with flood waters and debris coming ashore and flooding the entire order, car area. With the marshes in Nags Head as a barrier, the flooding was much less and came ashore more slowly and with much less damage. Living in Sugar Creek, I personally witnessed the flooding activity during Michael, where the majority of the flooding of the Sugar Creek condos came through the pathway created by our walkway to our private dock. In looking at the marsh after the flooding, it could be seen that the dense marsh grasses had actually matted and formed a dike to hold the floodwaters back. Based on these and these actual observation, more docks and destruction of marsh areas will only increase the chance of flooding along the sound front properties. In the future, we do not want to look like Bay Drive and killed over hills after a flooding event. Number three is estuarine nurseries. The sound front and marshes serve as a nursery for fish and shellfish. You can see this happening with the large schools of minnows that swim in and out of the marsh grasses 
all summer long, using them for protection. At page 3-45 of our land use plan, we state fishers are one of the most significant estuarine resources that benefit the regional and the state economy. According to the 2016 study in, entitled The Economic Valuation of the Albemarle Pamlico Watershed Natural Resources, these fishers have an annual economic value of $1 billion statewide. Commercial fishing industry provides income for residents and stocks many markets and restaurants in the region. While not a major contributor to Nags Head commercial fishing, Nags Head has historically been a mainstay of the culture here. The town should support and ensure future opportunities to gauge in commercial fishing by understanding the town's role in water quality and protection of the natural shoreline. The town's role is to maintain our marshlands and sound side water quality, to maintain the nurseries for the fishing industry. Number four is maintain our view sheds. When we had public input about the development of the sound side event site several years ago, the major issue for our local residents was that the site be developed to maintain the view shed of the sound and, and the marsh fronts. On page 3-46 of our land use plan, we state future development should be designed in a way to maintain and preserve these open water front view sheds. Certainly building long docks and marinas out into the sound certainly does not preserve the open water front view sheds. And this is a type of development we must avoid. Number five, maintain a business friendly environment. While trying to be friendly to business requests for additional facilities, we, almost, we also must consider the existing businesses. In the Recreation Overlay District, we allow water-based recreation businesses, but only with very specific limitations. Building long docks and marinas out into the sound and the boat traffic will severely impact those businesses that create and create safety issues when boats interact with jet skis, kayaks, windsurfers, and other non-motor activities that already exist in the area. In summary, before considering the approval of this request, I feel it would be beneficial for all to reread on section three of our current land use plan. This request does not, certainly does not fit with who we say we want to be and may have a long-term harmful effect on why our visitors want to come to Nags Head to enjoy our outstanding natural resources. Comma has made an error in approving permits for the two sites involved that they clearly violate our land use plan and existing ordinances. I therefore respectfully request that you deny this request the ordinance change. I'd be glad to answer any questions at this time. Board, have any questions for Mr. Edwards? Thank you very much, Good. sir. Thank you very much. Any, any uh, information from the applicant regarding this, this matter? Sure, sure. If you'll, if you'll please approach the uh, podium and, and speak from there so we can make sure we pick up your comments. Good morning, I'm Brian Rubino with Quibble and Associates and I, I can touch on uh, some of the issues uh, that were just discussed. Um, from an environmental perspective and also from a safety perspective. Um, so what we're asking for is a text amendment that would provide uh, transient slips only. So in the case of a restaurant, it would be where a restaurant patron would, would uh, bring their boat into the restaurant while they eat and be able to safely tie it up at a designated boat slip. And then as soon as they're done, they would they get back and, uh, and head back on their way. It'd be transient slips only. So. This would have nothing to do with um, haul out or traditional uh, marina services, uh, no blasting, painting, maintenance, fueling, um, no rentals of boats, no rented boat slips, no documentiums or anything like that. It would just be a, um, a place where someone with a boat could come to a restaurant and enjoy the facility. Um, I think there are very few properties in Nags Head in this uh, subject area that would be able to permit a, any boat slips. Um, anytime a commercial property owner wants to permit any slips, they have to go through the CAMA major process, which is a, uh, a very comprehensive environmental and safety review. 
Um, there's 15 state and federal agencies involved in each one of those permits. Um, not only can you, must you display that you're not affecting the marsh or uh, habitat, you must also show that you're you know, safely providing access and you're not building piers or facilities that extend too far into the water to an extent that CAM or any of the other federal state agencies considers usurpation of public trust. So if you did a 500 uh, linear foot pier out into the sound, you know, very, very likely that would be considered usur extensive usurpation of public trust and not something that would be permissive. Um, so in the case of uh, my client, uh, Miller's Waterfront, and uh, a newer client who I'm working with, their engineer, Tail the Whale, there would be, a, there would be really no extent, extensive piers built. Um, in fact, at uh, Miller's, the piers already in place out into the water. They would just need to build a T-head and, and slips uh, in, in that location out at the end. Um, the reason that the, uh, that the pier needed to be extended in the first place at Miller's, which is already built, is that uh, they, need, they wanted to get out to safe you know, water that required no dredging, no um, impacts to submerge aquatic vegetation, and safe pa passage uh, in and out. Um, in that particular case, and with any kind of major permit, you have to do a submerged aquatic vegetation and wetland delineation survey. Um, we, we did that at Miller's. We had uh, coastal management come out and review the findings in the field. We also had Division of Marine Fisheries do the same thing. And so that, that, that permit was signed off on and issued. Um, as far as the safety goes, you know, with the Army Corps of Engineers being a reviewer in the CAMA major process, the navigation branch looks at each one of these permit requests and they have to sign off on it as there being no significant impact. Um, the state also looks at safety. So there's, um, I understand there's, you know, personal watercraft rental facilities in the area. Um, you know, there is a require, an ordinance requirement that the operation of those uh, personal watercrafts is 600 feet from the edge of shore and that there's no wake within that zone. Um, any of these transient slips would adhere to that same requirement. There would be no wake. Essentially, a boater, you know, they're going to, they're not going to travel into the shore as much to the extent that they, they don't need to. So if, you know, if there's designated slips in deep water, someone would, uh, you know, idle or go at a no wake speed to, to these boat slips and, and more. Um, there would be no incentive for them to come in to shallower water to kick up sediment, um, which could happen in that shallow water. And in fact, you know, any boater could nose on up to the marsh and drop, drop an anchor. And, you know, in fact, you know, I used to do that in Duck before they had the public boardwalk there. There's restaurants there and now there's slips, you know, you can tie up and it's, you know, you're safely in and out. So what we're asking for is just uh, transient slips and it's, it, it would not be a marina by the eyes of the state, federal government. We're asking for a definition change in the town of Nags Head. Um, so I'd be happy to uh, answer any questions that the board or anyone else has on this. All right. Does the board have any questions for Mr. Rubino? <coughs> yes, sir. Yes. So going back to the Camel Major permit, the 14 possible areas that have been determined by the staff, out of those, if, say, all of them decided they wanted to spend the excessive money to determine with the, in, you know, the fee or the, the studies that take place, mm -hmm. In your professional opinion, how many of these 14 would possibly be well, excluded? I think, you know, basically, I think there may be three or four of those sites that could realistically permit or want to build a docking facility. Yeah, I think there's, there's several of these properties that are, that are restaurants. Some of those may have interest in doing it, maybe three of these um, in total. Um, issues that some of the other restaurants may have or extensive marsh crossing. So if you start at the, kind of the north, north end, the northernmost restaurant, for example, you would have to cross, we looked at that, it's about 700 linear feet of marsh even before you get to the water's edge. So the likelihood of getting that permit for that facility would be lo much lower. I don't know, and the water depth is a little bit shallower there as well. So I think the ability to get a camera permit on some of these is is pretty low and also 
many of these facilities, you know, there's a gas station, there's a tanker outlets, there's the raceway. You know, I don't know that someone's going to want to go to the raceway on their boat to use the facility and then and then leave on their. You know, may the logistics of and the cost of putting that in may not help those businesses. So I think the likelihood of them wanting to do slips on several of these properties is is very low, even if they could permit it through CAMA and 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 through the town. Because if what we're talking about here, I think, is a conditional use to where each one of these specific locations would have, you know, their own set of requirements and conditions. Right, another question with the, uh, based on your experience and opinion, how would a pier be any different than a sound side boardwalk or walking path as far as messing with the, uh, the fisheries or the, the land quality? water quality in those areas you know it's very comparable to a yeah like a sound side a boardwalk or or uh, something of that nature you know the impacts are associated with or temporary in, in that nature associated with driving the piles um, in this case well i'm talking about one particular project but in the in the case of of millers for example um, they're dry, they, they already drove the piles, but the piles are in, you know, bottom that is not submerged aquatic vegetation or coastal marsh. You can, you can get a permit to, to do that through marsh, but um, so I would say that, you know, you may have even less environmental impacts driving piles in uh, sound, open sound bottom without SAV as opposed to a sound front boardwalk over, over marsh or something like that. Yeah, so if somebody was for a boardwalk, then they should be for this in most cases, correct? I would definitely agree with that. All right, uh, Mr. Fuller. Um, under the current regulations we have right now, just a very quick answer. Under the current regulations we have right now, can a transient boat tie up, somebody get out of the boat and go in and eat at the restaurant? I'm not talking about physical limitations. I'm not talking about anything. Can somebody just tie up, get out of a boat, and go eat? I think yes, but that's a town. I think if that question's a, a town ordinance <clears throat> question. So I think if the town allows it, then I know CAMA allows it. And uh, so that's kind of a part of this discussion. I mean, I think that. Well, I guess what I'm saying is, I don't see anywhere where somebody can't tie up right now and go eat with the given regulation. I, I, I had a question you, on I that. I think you're right. Okay, okay. Get, okay. Next question. Okay. What prohibits one of your clients from putting in more dockage, pier, whatever you want to call it, even with the T, or whatever you want to call it, under the current regulations? In, you know, in my conversation with staff, to be able to put in that T would require a text amendment. So I think that's essentially. So can you show me in our text where we prohibit that? I, I can't. I, you know, I was pointing to the definition of a, what they have as a commercial marina. And I think it, it could be a bit subjective to whether or not just tying up is allowed to is allowed or not All right i mean i can't find in our ordinance where your client can't extend their dock if they want to i i thought we could and we went and got the camera major permit i thought we could and i was informed that we couldn't yet until a text amendment took place then then not ask you do i just asked the attorney to tell me in the ordinance where it says they can't do that. I, I'm, not, I'm not familiar enough to say. I haven't looked at that. Okay. It just gets to my whole confusion about why we're here to begin with. That's it. I'm through. All right. Other questions for Mr. Rubino? Mayor Pro Tem? I just have one. Uh, you stated earlier that really only three properties could perhaps build a pier. Yeah where we have 14 are you basing that under the assumption that over time none of these properties will ever change hand or ever change business use or couldn't 
develop up here? You're, are you just basing it on what you know today? Basing on what I know today and, you know, I guess a combination of things. Some of these properties have aquatic vegetation in front of them. Some of them have, don't have sufficient water depths, but some of them, like the gas station, the, the Tanger outlets, I'm just assuming that they, they don't want transient slips for people to, they wouldn't, they don't see it cost effective to put in transient slips for someone to use the store or the facility and then leave. So a combination. But Tango does also have restaurants with that capability. Okay. So, yeah. So no. yeah, Tango perhaps. does have restaurants. Yeah. So they already do that. Yeah. Okay. So that's probably a bad example on my, my side, but. Um, okay. Thank you. See it. Yeah. Other questions for Mr. Rubino? Anyone? Anything further, Mr. Rubino? No, thanks. All right. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Anything further from uh, the applicants? Yes, sir. I'm Hal Goodman with Construction Engineering Services. I filed, uh, did the design work and filed the permit application for Tail of the Whale. And uh, in answer to Commissioner Fuller's inquiry about uh, the town ordinance, all the approvals were gotten through all the <coughs> agencies and through CAMA, and then CAMA informed me that the permit could not be issued because of the town of Nags Head ordinance on commercial marinas. So that's why we're here. Uh, they, they would not issue the permit. And one thing I'd like to add to what Brian had explained to you is at Tail of the Whale, there's currently an existing gazebo out in the water. <clears throat> and I've been in the restaurant personally when I've seen boats pull up to the gazebo, which has high benches and a railing, tie up, and very dangerously have to climb up on the bow of the boat, climb over the back of the benches, and in. I watched a woman do it in high heels one night. And it's, it's definitely a liability and safety issue for the restaurant. And it's navigable water there, so boats are going to come. It is going to be used. And he just wants to put in 72 linear feet of pier to be able to have people safely be able to get in and out of a boat if they do approach the restaurant that way. Uh, questions? Yes, ma'am. Let's go ahead. Are you talking about adding 72 linear feet to what's existing? Yeah, that's what uh, CAMA has reviewed and all the agencies have agreed that would be allowed. That gets him out into, you know, over four feet of water and uh, allows enough space for four boats to be able to tie up there. He's only looking for four slips, not eight. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Fuller. So, and I guess the question comes back to staff, but you're saying you were denied because the town and ag's head said what you're requesting is a commercial marina under town yeah, definition. Yeah, the, the definition was that any boat tied up at a pier that is not for the personal use of the property owner constitutes a commercial marina is the way it reads right now. And so Cama said, until you get that worked out with Nag said, we can't issue the permit. We'll just put it on hold until you get that. Even though we have a number of other ones where we have individuals that tie up at dots, not for the personal yeah, use of Technically, that. the way that ordinance reads right now, uh, if you go to your neighbors and tie up at their pier, basically the way it's worded, you're in violation of that because you have a vessel tied up at that pier that does not belong to the property owner. So right now, if I leave my dock and go to my neighbor's dock, I'm in violation you of the town ordinance. You violated your ordinance the way it reads right now. You're saying that's what staff has told you? That's, I mean, if you read the ordinance, that's how it reads. It says any vessel tied up at a pier that is not for the exclusive use of the property owner is considered a commercial marina. It, some point in time, can I go back and ask staff a question? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. We, we're still in the public hearing, so yes, you can. All right, any other questions for Mr. Goodman? All right, thank you very much. Anything else from the applicant at this time? All right, uh, Commissioner Fuller, I think you had a question for that you would like to address to staff? 
Yes, I don't know who I'm addressing. Um, Let's let Ms. Wyatt take first crack at it since she started. The simple question is, if I leave my dock in my boat and go to my neighbor's house and park my boat at his house because he had asked me for dinner, am I in violation of the ordinance because that is, quote, a commercial marina? I think what you're engaging in is, is two residential properties. It's a residential use. It would never even trigger us to look into that. Um, as Mr. Goodman said, the, the definition does, um, it, it says, means any publicly or privately owned dock basin wet storage facility constructed to accommodate mooring for boats, which are not for the exclusive use of the landowner and providing, but not limited to, and then it goes through. Um, but I mean, I, I, I don't know how to respond other than staff is not out enforcing um, boat transportation between residential uses. Okay, let me go. Okay, I own a commi commercial piece of property that has a dock on it. I leave that commercial piece of property and I go to another commercial piece of property. Am I in violation of the ordinance? Technically, you may be. We have, that has not been anything that staff has been interested um, in enforcing. And, and I don't want to speak out of turn, but to go back to a previous question, yes, there are linear piers um, that people pull their, their boats, their kayaks, their whatever up to and, and go to the restaurant with. It was just in this case, um, they were looking at an L shape to provide specified boat slips. So when that came before us, it, it seemed clear to violate the definition. But yes. Okay. I leave my house in Manio. I drive over to the Dairy Queen site, which has access to the water. I park my boat there, get out, and go to Dairy Queen and eat, get back in my boat, and go back home. Have I violated something? Or has Dairy Queen violated something? So Dairy Queen has those boat slips as part of a commercial outdoor recreation overlay use. They came before this board and they were approved for that use. You may not be utilizing it for the commercial outdoor recreation water dependent use, um, but nothing about that would have triggered us to investigate. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll just let it go. I don't know why I'm here. <laughs> Mayor Potem. I, I have a question. It's, it's kind of a follow up on what you said, talking about the a residential use. You have a, you leave your pier, you go to your neighbor's pier because he invited you for dinner. Well, that's still for the exclusive use of the property owner because he's invited you to dinner. Would that not be correct? I mean, I'm not seeing how that would be a violation under the technical term of what we're discussing. Mm -hmm. Well, I think the violation, to the extent there's a violation by any of these activities, the violation would be committed by the landowner where the activity is occurring because it's the use of their property that really is an issue. So the last hypothetical that Commissioner um, Fuller provided was the one at Dairy Queen. In, the, in that scenario, the question isn't really whether, and I think he, he asked it alternatively, it wouldn't be whether Mr. Fuller is violating anything, it's whether Dairy Queen, the landowner, is. Is, is violating anything because it's engaging in a use that that's a use the question is whether that's a permitted use or an allowed use in that zoning district and consistent with their cup and so forth May I say something? yes sir Must be. Mm -hmm. I, I think the biggest problem web is the fact that nags heads commercial or nags heads definition of marina doesn't you know parallel <coughs> actual camas definition of marina so with that it restricts a lot of use on the waterway that they can do and when a camera major permit is actually put into play you've eliminated most worries that that smaller commercial marina was definition in our ordinances was put in back in the past if if, mm -hmm. if this wasn't a commercial if that if our commercial mar marina ordinance was the same as camas 
and we trusted the fact that CAMA's major permits are actually doing their job in restricting things that weren't supposed to happen, we would not be here today having this discussion because it would have been passed by the town in the, in, with the CAMA permit, as would be a dock off of the back of your residential property in most cases. But in this case, it's being commercial. Also, there's a, if this was a jet ski operation that wanted to add food, you probably wouldn't be here today because those ordinances don't really go into play. But because these are restaurants that are coming before you, asking you to allow boat access use off a dock that may or may not existing already be there, then now we have an issue because our ordinance aren't clear. They're not precise on exactly where we're at. So just like with Ms. Wyatt saying it may or may not be in this particular case acceptable, but they probably wouldn't trigger an alarm for anybody. It's because it's nothing they've had to deal with. It's not clear black and white. It's a gray area. And I think in the past, that's what's caused us to be in the situation where today is there's too much what ifs and trying to overextend our control on everything or we wouldn't be in this situation. You wouldn't have to be here for the last 45 minutes talking about them wanting to add four boat slips. I think I understand what you're saying. Um, I agree with what you're saying. Um, but I guess what I'm looking at is what's in front of me today is quite, seems to be trying to look at piecemealing something or trying to put a, a square peg in a round hole. It's just not, it just, it doesn't pass the smell test to me about what we're trying to do. It looks too individualistic to accommodate somebody for something that they can already do in my opinion. You just can't do it safely and you can't do it without either walking through the water up to your ankles, or up to your knees, or climbing over a bench. I mean, I've, I've used the, the uh, well bone, I've used bass nights. I've went to those locations by water. Um, most folks won't, unless you're a local, you're probably not even gonna attempt it because you don't know how to get there by water. So it, it is, um, we're doing a lot for a little. If that, I mean, that's, I think that's what you're trying to say. Right. And it's based on the ordinance that were written back in the, in the 80s and 90s that are restricting them and staff to making this decision to correct it without our help. Right, and I, and I would like to add that the study and everything back then was because all of a sudden the industry, if you will, and the demand was for jet skis. We, it's labeled personal watercraft because that's what you have to label it. But it was personal watercraft and windsurfers and hang gliding type stuff. So it wasn't really geared at looking at restaurants with piers and stuff, but it was, a, it was trying to look at the carrying capacity of that area because of all of a sudden we were getting inundated with a number of requests for new businesses that were just taking over that whole area. And we want to figure out how to do it safely. Um, now, of course, that may affect this. It may not, but I, it, I don't think that was the direct, re, the direct reason for that study, was to look at stuff like this. Just a sidebar. All right, any other questions for Ms. Wyatt, or does the board wish to receive any other information from anyone? before I, deliberating. I have yes, one sir. clarification question. Will somebody repeat for me what the depth of the no-wake zone is in that <clears> area? <throat> I thought I heard the applicant make a reference to, I thought I heard 700 feet, but. Six. It's 600, 600 feet. feet, okay, thank you. All right, anything else? May, may I get one point of clarification as yes, well? Sir. Um, we heard, statement that this violates our land use plan and I'd like to know for staff if this does violate our land use plan. Um, yes, the, the 2010 and the new, um, there are references in there that would lead up, that would leave staff to recommend denial of this application due to its inconsistency with the land use plan. So to the attorney, 
can we vote on something specifically that violates our land use plan before we change our land use plan? You have to make a, uh, no, you have to make a determination as part of adopting this that it is consistent with the land use plan. And we've heard staff say that it is not. Did, did um, the planning board in their deliberations when they approved it, did they find in their opinion that it um, was consistent with the land use plan? Um, they did not make reference to the land use plan with their recommendation. Right. Yeah. yeah, that's a requirement that the board has in, in passing on a zoning ordinance text amendment. Is, is making a is making a finding of consistency. Uh, other, any other information from Kelly that y'all need? I'm going to ask one more question then. Um, specify for us, please. Um, which provision or which aspect of this ordinance is in violation of the land use plan? Let's see. So, I believe it's in the whereas. It is. Um, so we have uh, the 2010, which I know we're in 27 currently, 2017 states that the town shall support the policy of maintaining the town's self-sufficiency by providing adequate services and, and amenities. Um, the 2010 land use plan states the town does not desire the following uses. Dry stack boat storage, floating homes, um, large, more than 10 boats, um, commercial boat marinas, finger canals, um, upland excavation for boat marinas, um, mooring buoys to accommodate transient um, boat slips and visitors. So I, that language has not changed from 2010 to 2017. That is still in there. Okay. So I didn't hear in that list a prohibition on a pier that was not a marina that was eight slips or less as a tie-up for transient use. With the reduction from 10 to 8, um, you're right. This would okay. not apply. So, so the application, which is for eight, would not be inconsistent with the land use plan by that reading. I don't want to say, Mr. Edwards brought forward some items from the 2017 comprehensive plan um, <coughs> that I'm hesitant to tell you that this request is consistent with that. Um, okay. I did not have an opportunity to review completely those items that Mr. Edwards listed. Hmm. I'd like to make a motion. Well, we're, I'm sorry, we're still in the uh, public hearing. Is yeah. There any way? Is there any way? Yeah, you. Yeah, you, you, if, if you yeah, why don't you, if you have some further comment. Sure. If, you, if you'll just go get back up to the podium, Mr. Rubino. Okay. <clears throat> Regarding the land use plan, I didn't hear anything that in Mr. Edwards' comments that we're impacting or. or inconsistent with you know he mentioned a disturbance of the coastal marsh and uh, sea, sea level rise disturbance of submerged aquatic vegetation none of none of that is what I don't think we're we conflict with any of that and Miller's got a camera major permit the town is was the adjacent riparian owner they got a letter there was no no um, objections at that point in time and also there was you know there was no inconsistency with the land use plan determined by camel so i don't think there's any in inconsistencies with the land use plan on, on what we're asking for um is one of the adjacent landowners the town of nags head yes sir and the town of nags head did not object did not object okay any other questions for Mr. Rubino? Yes, ma'am. Point yes. of clarification, if I might. Um, looking at the narrative, it says the proposed text amendment would amend the definition of commercial marina to constitute a facility where more than eight boats can be accommodated. Should be no more than eight. I saw that typo last night as well in that, okay. in that so report. I, that was confusing me. Everybody's talking about a cap of eight, and this right. doesn't say that. I, I just noticed that. Okay, thank you. All right. Other questions for Mr. Rubino? Anything further? No, thanks. Uh -huh. All right. Mr. Mayor? Does, does the board wish to receive any other information 
from the staff or the applicant on this matter before you begin your deliberations. Um, just one question. What was the process the staff went through to determine <coughs> to support or not comment uh, as an adjoining property owner? Um, we received the application from CAMA jointly w within weeks of um, getting the building permit application for this. So we didn't reply to the um, CAMA application. Um, we got the building permit application asking to construct this. So it was at that time that we just notified the applicant um, that it was inconsistent with the land use plan. Or I mean inconsistent with the definition for commercial marina. Okay, so what process did the town employ to decide whether to comment or not comment? I'm not sure I understand. I know at the time that we determined that it was inconsistent, I notified Frank Jennings and Yvonne Carver, but we did not formally fill out the objection for CAMA and return that. Does, does that make sense? If you told CAMA verbally you thought it was inconsistent and as a joining property owner you said nothing, does that make sense? Um, it, it may not. I'm saying that when we received the comment form from CAMA um, to do that, I'm not sure time frame, very soon after we actually had the building permit application in our hands. Um, so I, I'm not going to say that we followed procedure perfectly with submitting the uh, formal denial to CAMA. I'm, I'm not going to say that we did that, but we did notify CAMA that it was inconsistent with the zone. Okay. Commissioner, go ahead. Point of clarification for Commissioner Fuller. Staff informing CAMA that it's inconsistent prohibits the CAMA from issuing the permit, so it doesn't matter whether the town replied as an adjoining property owner or not. Once CAMA is aware that it's inconsistent, they're not allowed to proceed. And comments from an adjoining property owner neither does not affect the ability of an applicant to get a permit. But may I ask, if the adjoining property owner cites the inconsistency with the land use plan to coastal management as their reasoning, then that does come into effect. It does, which either way you handle it, it has the same effect. If staff notified them that it violated the land use plan or if they filled out the application, the adjoining property owner letter that they objected based on land use plan, it has the same result. But for clarification, they got the permit. So CAMA felt it was okay. So either they didn't get the message that it wasn't okay or CAMA overruled them. CAMA can't overrule the land use CAMA plan. gave them the permit. Camera had to make a determination, a peer, and the key, not, key word is Camera made a determination that it did not violate our land use plan. As they originally designed it with the T as on it that was rejected yes, by the true. town. Because that's the that only way true. they could have gotten the permit, because they make a determination that is based true. on our land use plan, regardless of what we think. Correct. Do you have something further to add, Kelly? Just, no, I, I was just wanted to confirm, yes, Camera did issue the Correct. As they originally drew it, correct? Mm -hmm. Correct. With the T. All right. Any any further information that the board wishes to receive? Anything further from staff? Um, I just want to clarify. It was the inconsistency was with our ordinance, not the land use plan, with the definition of commercial marina. Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. okay. Thank you. All right, at this time we will conclude the public hearing and the board may begin its deliberations on this proposed zoning ordinance text amendment. Mr. Fuller, do you still have a motion that you would like to make? I'm waiting if anybody wants to say anything because I probably won't get a second. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's, let's put it on the table anyway uh, uh, in, in good order to uh, get it, get discussion going. 
Um, I'd like to make a motion that the town take no action on what has been presented to us. Do you mean to table this? I mean take no action at this time. You can, in legalese, if you want, call that a table. I say take no action at this time. Is that? Uh, the only we're... thing I think I have a problem with on my motion is it has to have a time specific date. Reasonable time specific. A reasonable time specific. You mean in, in terms of bringing it back before the board? Either way, whether you actually table it through motion or take the action you're proposing, the board would need to take some action on this within a reasonable time, which is generally about 90 days. And with that said, I would add 90 days. Take no action on it within the next 90 days. Okay, so the motion from Commissioner Fuller is to, that the board take no action for the next up to 90 days. Is there a second for that motion? May I ask a question to Mr. Fuller? I think so. If it's clarifying the motion so you can decide whether to second it, I think that would be useful. Oh. No. Okay. Okay. The not hearing a second, having given adequate time, I think that motion dies. Thank you. Thank you. Discussion. All right. Discussion. Yeah. Mr. Commissioner Fuller. Mr. Mr. Fuller, uh, what is your objection to, to move? I still on. haven't figured out what the request is for, why, or why we're here entertaining what we're entertaining. I'd like a lot more specific. It looks like something is being piecemealed. I would like a lot more discussion between staff and the applicants that address what we're looking at more comprehensively. Uh, I, I just, I, 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 I like you, I've gone out on boats and eaten and I, for the life of me, can't, some, some places you get out are safe, some places aren't. Um, you tie up and you get out, you know where you're going. If you don't want to go there, you don't go there. Um, I know they might want to try to provide a more safe accommodation, but to me, this is a congested area and I'd like to see the whole thing addressed more comprehensively, particularly as a representative of Dare County Tourist Bureau and somebody that may think that there's a reason to provide some dock space and stuff that I would like to see it just addressed more comprehensively. I'm hearing too many unanswered questions or what we thought or what this is. I do think we're very, very limited in our um, depth of water. I'd hate to see a lot of that that the um, Mr. Edwards brought up as part of his statement really it relates to the bottoms out there. Um, I don't want people that aren't familiar with that area to cause a lot of concern to the natural environment. I do see a need for people to be able to get to a restaurant by dock. I think that's a new use that's happening all over. I don't wanna see somebody coming in here and start asking for Oh, I've added dock space, so that's equivalent to a parking space. Therefore, I can get more seats in my restaurant. I want to make sure all those things are fleshed out, and I just don't think we're ready for this. Oh, if I can try to, to may I, um, articulate what a, why I think we're here, is that today we have restaurants and facilities where, yes, you can go and tie up a boat and go have dinner. In some cases, you can't do that safely because of the configuration of those piers and those uh, gazebos. Those property owners would like to fix that and provide a safe docking facility, which CAMA will also allow you to do. But our ordinance, as Marina is currently defined, will not let you do either of those things, either legally to go tie up at an existing pier to go eat dinner there, 
because that's a violation of our ordinance. And CAMA will not act on um, this until we clarify that um, this is not a marina and that, it, and that what they want to permit is permitted by the town. Am I, am I correct about that? No. CAMA's already issued the permit. Well, okay, well, it's on hold, but we'll permit it. They will permit it if we make this adjustment to eliminate the inconsistency. Mm -hmm. I was under, I'm sorry, I was under the impression that CAMA had issued the permit. One, one, Miller's has a permit, uh, Taylor Whale well will be issued until, until they've approved it. So they've issued one. Yeah. In 2016. Okay. <laughs> so, th so there's confusion. Excuse me. To me, it is. They issued a permit until such time as it, the town objected that it violated its land use plan, and that's when a, an amendment came forward in 2017, which was denied. So there, it has never gone forward. It wasn't the land. Mind. Excuse me. It wasn't the land use plan. It's the fact of the it. marina. We did not do that. Yeah, violated the marina, but we did not pass it. So they didn't pass it because it came in as ten slips, which is a marina. Okay, so we've had a, a motion which died for lack of a second. We've had additional discussion. Is there another motion to be made? I make a motion to pass as presented. Okay, thank you. I have a motion to approve as presented. Is there a second to that? I hear no second, so that motion dies as well. I have a question, kind of as a follow-up on Commissioner Fuller's, which is about the carrying capacity. There, at the time, the carrying capacity was done based on the number of jet skis, which are pretty limited. Has the town done anything to see what the redevelopment of all 14 sites would create as a carrying capacity and to see how if, <coughs> if passed as presented eight slips ten slips four slips whatever it would be would impact the carrying capacity of our estuary shoreline may I just follow up on on that a little yes. bit um, with that if that was done, would that include the interaction with all other water sports, paddle boarding, kayaking, windsurfing, um, you know, personal watercraft, everything that's going on in that established commercial recreational overlay district? Would a study include all of that? In my mind, mm -hmm. yes, because the carrying capacity is everything, how much traffic we have going out the accesses that we have, which of which we have three in that area, mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken, Harvey, Little Bridge, and uh, the other restroom right there beside right there. the tackle place, yeah. as well as redevelopment. What is the maximum carrying capacity that we can tolerate? And that's not an objection to this. It's trying to figure out whether four is a magic number, eight is a magic number, ten is a magic number, versus how many. Would the study change? Mm -hmm. The study we did some time ago only dealt with outdoor recreation. It didn't do a carrying capacity. So I guess that's my question. If we're talking about safety, we have to be all-encompassing. Is it okay for me to respond at this point? You, you can. Yes, sir. We have not updated that study and you know just my review of the study a lot of it was based on um, opinions of individuals who use the area and so that that was a major component of of the results of the study and so we haven't updated the study and you know in order to update the study we'd probably have to go through a similar process and that would most likely have to be done during the seasonal period. 
um, in order to observe the traffic and you know question or interview the users of the area. Um, and a lot of the results of the study are, are subjective based on the population that's using the area because you're really trying to get at, at <coughs> an appropriate level of congestion and that differs based on the individual you talk to. So I'm, I'm hearing some sentiment toward, toward a, a study, which is something that the town would have to allocate funds to do and allocate time as well. Um, if, I, if I may, I'm going to offer some observations on this before I ask for another, before I ask for another motion or um, decide which direction that we're, we're going in. Um, you know, having looked at this application and looked at the area that it applies to, there are a number of factors involved. Um, we have a no-wake zone that's 600 feet. There are no legal restrictions in that area on boat traffic now. So the potential conflicts can occur today without regard to whether any additional piers or facilities are built. If you look at this geographically, the area that we're talking about that is essentially south of the village and out to um, Pond Island, if you will, that area geographically is the same as the western half of Shallowbag Bay. If you drew a line south from, from Festival Park um, and looked at that part of Shallowbag Bay, including the harbor at Mania, geographically it's the same size. All of these same activities occur in that area, uh, sailing lessons, uh, commercial marina uh, operations, uh, jet skis, all of those same operations occur there without con apparent conflict that I'm aware of um, or, or significant accidents. Um, so I, I think that that, would be, that that would be comparable. With regard to most of the, um, the vegetation, the, the sound bottom, uh, those concerns, with a CAMA major, nobody's ever accused CAMA of being liberal with major permits. I mean, so those issues get addressed. I'm confident those areas get addressed adequately uh, by that application that's, that's necessary. Um, visually, most of these facilities are going to occur behind existing businesses. Um, and uh, you know, it's a, they're gonna be conditional uses. We're gonna get close looks at every, every application that comes forward. Um, they're going to be beneficial to the existing businesses um, and, and generally um, I wish that we could move away from a strict reliance on the car for us to get to literally every place that we want to go and if we can offer an option for people to get to existing facilities by boat instead of car um, I personally would be in favor of that so, thank you so is there um, a motion with regard to a study? Is there any consensus on the board without making a motion to have a study? I don't personally, I don't think the consist or the uh, study the last time was as accurate as it needed to be when over 75% of the people were tourists that visit here one week a year and don't understand the true <coughs> demographics of the area to begin with. Okay. Not hearing consensus. I'm sorry. I said I'm not hearing consensus. Right. So. Okay. All right. One more try. <laughs> Anybody have any observations or? a uh, different motion. So Mr. Lighty advised me. <laughs> we're, we're, we're here with a, a, a topic before us and the inability to um, get well, an actionable motion. The motion to table has been has failed. The motion to approve as presented has failed. That leaves a few alternatives. One would be a motion to deny. Another one would be another motion to table with some specific direction to staff on what you need, whether it's approving a study or something like that. That'd be another alternative. Um, but um, 
I believe that some action should be taken. Otherwise, it will have the effect of having tabled this. Okay. And I'll also say this, Mr. Mayor, if the, if the board were to take no action today <clears throat> and did not take any action within a reasonable time, that would have the effect of denying this as presented mm -hmm. eventually. And the applicant would be in a position to challenge the board's action at that time as having denied it as if it was a denial today. Okay. All right. Another Thank option would be staff's recommendation. Richard. Yeah, the staff's made a recommendation. Which would be four slips instead of eight. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Mayor yes. Patel? Did we establish that it, it is inconsistent with our land use plan and that is one of the findings? Or is only if that was a 10 slip? Well, in order to, the, the easy answer is, in order for you to prove anything, you have to find that it's consistent with the land use plan. Um, I don't know that there's been a finding, but well, certainly there hasn't been a finding by the board because you haven't taken action, whether it's consistent or inconsistent. Um, I think it's unclear from the discussion we've, we've heard today, I think it's a bit unclear whether the original proposal or this, the, uh, the, the staff's recommended proposal is consistent with the land use plan. Now the board may have, I think you've received a sufficient evidence that you could find that it's consistent or inconsistent, but as I sit here today, I can't give an opinion myself because I haven't studied it that closely, but y'all may have received sufficient evidence to make a finding one way or the other. Okay. Let me suggest this. Um, uh, would anybody be willing to offer a motion that this be tabled until the February meeting and that staff would render um, a definitive opinion about whether this is or is not consistent with the land use plan and that in that time, staff would also address any questions that may be offered by commissioners with regard to inconsistencies or additional information? Um, I can agree to that uh, as long as our attorney is involved uh, to determine whether it is or is not um, consistent and being mindful that this can affect 14 property. Sure. Yes. Now I'm just, if you're gonna, is that a motion? Okay, yes. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> and I will second that motion. Okay. All right. So, so the motion is to table this until the February meeting with staff and the town attorney to render a definitive opinion as to whether this is or is not consistent with the land use plan and for staff to address any questions that may come from board members in that time. Is that the motion? Yes. Okay. Is there a second? A second. Okay, I have a motion and a second. Is there further discussion? Okay. Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Thank you. Um, we are well past our time specific 10 o'clock item. Um, I suspect the board would like a short break before we hear the audit um, report. And so we will take a five minute recess. Um, and when we come back, we will do the, uh, we will do the audit report. Thank you. And the board is returned to order. Uh, we will now move to new bit business item three which is the presentation of the uh, annual audit report. Good morning. Hey, welcome. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. I am happy to be here this morning to present the results of your June 30th, 2018 independent audit. The town has received an unmodified opinion on its financial statements, which is the best audit opinion that you can receive. The opinion confirms that the town's financial statements are presented fairly in accordance with generally accepted accounting principles. The town goes above and beyond the basic financial statement reporting requirements by preparing a comprehensive annual financial report, or CAFR, which provides additional statistical and historical information on the town's finances. The town has been awarded a certificate of achievement for its CAFR for two years, from the National Government Finance Officers Association and has submitted this report to the GFOA as well. Your audit report has also been approved by the Local Government Commission. 
Um, the report's about 120 pages long, so I'm not going to go through it page by page with you today. <laughs> I would like to take just a few minutes this morning to review some financial highlights for each fund. <clears throat> Excuse me. The general fund is the largest fund comprising most government functions except for those reported in the water fund. The town ended the year with an unassigned fund balance of $6,378,688, a decrease of $201,000 from the prior year. This amount represents 45% of current year general fund expenditures and transfers compared to 35% in the prior year. Although the dollar amount has decreased, the percentage has increased because total expenditures from one year to the next decreased. The town has a minimum fund balance policy which instructs management to strive to maintain an unassigned fund balance of 50% of expenditures, excluding bonded debt, but not less than $5 million. The ending fund balance is slightly less than the 50%, but more than the minimum $5 million required. Overall, the general fund ended the year in very strong financial shape. The water fund accounts for the town's water operations. Operating revenues increased by approximately $160,000. However, these increased revenues were offset by increased operating expenses of $157,000 resulting in an operating loss of about $378,000. This compares to the prior year loss of about $382,000. Ideally, you want operating revenues to cover operating expenses plus depreciation. And the town has included a water rate increase in its current budget, which should help decrease this operating loss in the current year. Aside from this negative income from the water fund, there are actually some other positive financial indicators in your water fund. There's something that we call a quick ratio analysis, which is your current assets over your current liabilities, and the town's ratio for that is 13 to 1, which is more than twice the average for even the largest water systems. Your day's cash on hand is 407 days, which compares to water systems your size. So. I think you're headed in the right direction with your water fund having increased your rates this year. The capital reserve fund ended the year with $6,739,000, most of which is reserved for beach nourishment. There are reserves included in there for stormwater, parks and paths, and facility fees. That pretty much sums up your three major funds. There is one other thing that I want to um, talk with you about today, moving away from the individual funds. Um, and that is that the town was required to implement what's called GASB 75. It's a um, governmental accounting standard board statement. Um, and it is um, for retiree health insurance for the town. And it changed the way that um, local governments have to report the liability for retiree health insurance. Just to give you a little background, we originally started reporting a liability for retiree health insurance some eight years ago. When we started, there had to be some mechanism in place for reporting the past cost that had been accrued for those employees that were already employed. Governments were originally allowed to amortize that past service cost over 30 years. So we were gradually recognizing that past service cost. Well, then um, they came up with GASB 75. That became effective. And we were no longer allowed to amortize that past service cost. We had, to rec we had to all at one point recognize the full past service cost that had um, accrued. And so um, for Nags Head, that meant increasing its beginning liability in fiscal year 2018 by $2,475,000. Moving forward, the town will recognize an actuarially determined expense for this benefit offset by payments for the benefit. Um, just a reminder that this is only a financial reporting standard. It's not a funding standard. There's nothing in the standard that says that you have to fund that. However, there are some um, options in place for local governments to be able to start setting aside money for that benef benefit if you want to. But the money has to be set aside in a trust fund. Um, and it has to be a legal trust fund um, designated for those particular benefits. 
I want to end by confirming the town's strong financial position as well as letting you know of the high caliber work being done by your finance department. They are successfully transitioning to what I consider to be a um, better financial software, and I'd like to express my thanks to Amy Miller and the Finance Department for their work to produce this audit report, and I appreciate the opportunity to work with the town and look forward to working with you for years to come, and I am happy to answer any questions that you may have. Okay. Does anyone have any questions? Yes. One quick question. Um, Adirondacks Hospital is listed as one of our top taxpayers. Mm -hmm. Um, is any of their property tax exempt or is 100% of it taxable? I'm thinking it's all taxable, yeah. All the buildings that are around the hospital, yes. including the hospital, pay taxes to the town of Nags Head? That is my understanding. Thank you. I want to publicly verbalize a compliment that I've sent back to the town manager after I read the, the audit was, um, an appreciation for the clarity, um, the narratives, um, and the statistical analysis is um, something very hard to do, which is actually readable, um, and um, and it's it's very clear, and I think it's very helpful. So I'm grateful to staff and everyone who participated in the process of preparing the financial statement. Just one comment, Teresa. I want to thank you again for reminding us about the employee responsibilities that we have that show up in our audit, especially now, because it can be a huge number and it's pretty scary sometimes when you look at it. It is. Um, the Local Government Commission, um, there, there are very few towns, I will just let you know, very few local governments in North Carolina that are actually funding this benefit. At last count, I think it was just five. Um, but the Local Government Commission is starting to ask the question if you go to them for any debt approval, they're starting to ask, you know, what kind of plans you have in place for funding it. Again, there's not a requirement, but you could be asked the question um, if you go to them for any debt approval. Which we do now. <laughs> we do. We do. <coughs> Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you, Teresa, very much. Thank Appreciate you. You all have a great day. Thank you for being here. Thank you. And Mayor, thanks to Amy, who's yes. doing a great job getting that information back and out. Yeah. It's much more understandable. Thank you, Amy. Okay. The um, next item on our agenda would be new business uh, number one. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. If we could, there's one other thing I just wanted to be able to um, have Amy present the, just to kind of give you an idea of the PAFR. Yes. Uh, okay. Thank you. This is hot off the presses. Um, And this is really supposed to be a, an opportunity for the public to be able to view the financial position of the town, um, as well as incorporating some of your goals and initiatives uh, and, and staff department work as well. Right, it's like maybe the cute little baby of the CAFR or where form meets function. I think it's a document I'm, I'm really proud of. It's, um, you can't, we are submitting this PAFR to the, and again, I'm, I'm using acronyms, so, um, the PAFR is a popular annual financial report. We are submitting it to the GFOA, the Government Finance Officers Association, the same um, place that we will submit the CAFR to. Um, and their requirement is that you cannot submit a PAFR unless you submit a CAFR. And you cannot receive an award for your PAFR unless you receive an award for your CAFR. Um, so, <laughs> so we... <laughs> <laughs> so, so last year we actually did do a PAFR and we actually received award for the PAFR. So um, hopefully this year again, um, we will hopefully receive an award for both again. Um, and again, what, what it, this is a collaborative effort um, between all departments and I think it really highlights and showcases some of the hard work that everybody has done through the town and some of our accomplishments and achievements that we're all extremely proud of. Um, the, the GFOA, again, is a technical committee, um, and they help us interpret um, generally accepted accounting principles, which is GAAP and GASB, again, Governmental Accounting Standards Board. Um, there are criteria and guidelines that the GFOA requires 
both the CAFR and the PAFR to follow. So um, it's kind of short, sweet, it's non-technical, it's graphic, it's illustrative. Um, it's meant to be very accessible and understandable to anybody um, and, and not intimidating. So we, again, we wanted to use this as a platform to let the public know that this is available to them. Um, we have it on Twitter, we have it on Facebook, we have it on Instagram, we have it on our website. Um, we have copies in the back, we have copies at Town Hall. So I know one of the themes of this is um, an open and transparent governance. And I think this is a vehicle to illustrate that and demonstrate that. So hopefully um, we will have people that find this very useful and understandable and we're, we're proud to submit this. If you have any comments or suggestions when you're reviewing this that we can incorporate into um, next year's uh, report, we're happy to take those because we do want you to be able to use this to communicate uh, to the citizens what we're doing, how we're doing it, and, and you know, that, that we're being good stewards of their taxpayers, uh, the taxpayers' dollars. So thank you. And again, my appreciation to Amy, and they put time in, a lot of time in to get this done. And I, I think it looks great. Yeah. And, and the PAFR does have to, um, it references the CAFR. It is, it's not audited, unlike the CAFR, but the numbers do come directly from the CAFR. So, you know, obviously the CAFR has to come first, and then once that's been settled. So it's a quick turnaround because they are both due to the GFOA December 30th. And we have submitted both of them to the GFOA. Okay. Thank you. Commissioner Walters. I was just going to reiterate the, um, the thanks for all the hard work and um, the professionalism and, and just creating the CAFR. I know is a, it's, it can be overwhelming once you uh, finished your audit process. And uh, I think this is a really great um, tool for the general public, the, the PAFR, um, because it does illustrate in simple terms our where where the money comes from, where the money is expended, without having to go through such a, a technical report. So, and it's it's lovely. So, thank, <laughs> thank you. you, thank you for all the hard work on that. Thanks to all the staff who worked on that. And I, I actually, I I just checked, and I think that there's only 15 people in the state that submit a PAFR, and only six of them are municipalities. So, I'm proud to be in that group of people. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, so now the next item of, of um, on our agenda would be new business item one, committee reports. Come down the line. Does anyone have a committee report to well, mate? Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. Oh, oh sorry. Golly. Can't can't even read today. Oh, jumped a, Anna jumped. Anna jumped the site plan application. Good God, help me. <laughs> um, so I will back up again, <laughs> and uh, we will do our uh, focus project update. Holly, finally let you come to the podium. Sorry. Okay. Good morning, Mayor and Commissioners. Um, I'm happy to provide you an update on the UDO project. Um, staff provided you a copy of the draft. Um, December on December 18th um, the technical and planning board are both reviewing this draft document um, at this time and will provide feedback back to staff with any substantial concerns prior to the board retreat uh, in the meantime we'd be happy to sit down individually with you if you need that um, to review through any concerns you might have with the draft document <coughs> and in preparation um, for the board retreat that's all I have at this time. Okay. Thank you. So we would ask uh, board members to direct your questions as you're reviewing this document to Holly and, and the staff. Any other comments or questions? Great. Thank you, Holly. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. Then the next item on our agenda is G2, <laughs> consideration of a site plan amendment. Thanks, Kelly. <laughs> Go for. 
Okay, thank you. Um, I went ahead and just pulled up the site plan so we could look at it as we ran through this. Um, but this is a site plan review. The applicant is LKC Engineering on behalf of the village at uh, the village at Nags Head Carolina Water Service um, Sewage Treatment Facility. Uh, the purpose of the site plan review is for construction of an accessory structure of approximately 2,300 square feet to house treatment equipment and the electrical components associated with that. Um, this is the structure that we're talking about. So this is an enclosed structure. These are, um, this is a pad being constructed with some uh, membrane filters here. And then also I believe there's an additional generator pad here. Um, there was a gravel drive that went around that sort of came through here. So with these new improvements, that gravel driveway is being relocated. Um, that's pretty much the extent of what they're doing. They are, in, um, they are not located in a flood zone. Um, the 2017 comprehensive plan classifies the property as institutional and community service. Um, so it is consistent with that. Lot coverage for this property, um, because it is in the village, they have greater lot coverage allowance. The lot coverage is 70%. This is a very large property. With these additional improvements, they're coming in at 9.4. So lot coverage is compliant here. Um, the structure that's on site, um, it does have to meet height requirements. Um, 35 feet is the maximum that we would allow and they're coming in at under 20 feet. So height is compliant here. Architectural design, um, LKC Engineering did send this design through the village at Nexhead Architectural Control Committee. They reviewed it and approved it. We have the stamped elevations for those um, over at Town Hall. So in terms of parking, the, uh, the parking standard for uh, a public utility building is one space per employee. There's only an anticipation that one employee at any given time um, would be here. So there's adequate um, areas on this site for that to occur. Um, but just north of this property is the maintenance building where there are several parking spaces available. Um, so there's um, parking on site if necessary here and here. Um, but there's uh, improved spaces over here at the maintenance facility as well. Nothing about this application triggered additional buffering or buffering requirements, um, but if you look in your site plan um, information, they did propose a significant amount of vegetation along this western boundary and along the southern boundary here. We do have some residential properties here. There's already some vegetation there, but they are proposing a thick line of vegetation along the southern boundary as well. There's no lighting or signage, signage associated with the request. Um, for stormwater management, they did have to retain on site um, the water that would, would uh, shed from the new improvements, being this structure and then the generator pad. Um, they submitted that plan to the town engineer and uh, David Ryan has reviewed and approved those plans. Um, nothing changes with regard to traffic circulation, so uh, that's compliant. The fire department has reviewed and approved the proposed application. As always, it will have to comply with North Carolina Fire Prevention Code. Um, Shane's been working directly with them on the amounts of um, chemicals and things like that that will be involved. Public Works has reviewed and approved the site plan as it's been proposed. Um, and with that being said, staff recommends approval of the site plan as proposed and the planning board at their December meeting also recommended approval of the site plan as proposed. And unfortunately, I don't think we have anyone here from LKC this morning. Um, I'll try to answer any questions you may have. Okay. All right. Anyone have any questions for Kelly or any comments? Hear none. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I make a motion to approve as presented. Thank you. I have a second. motion. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve as presented. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you very much.
I think I already asked for committee reports and nobody had one. Um, so the next item on our agenda would be item H2, appointment to fill a vacancy on the planning board. I'd like to make a nomination of me, Gwen, to fill that position. Okay, thank you. Well, I appreciate that. Are there any other nominations? Hearing none, um, a motion would be in order. I second Webb's motion. Yeah. Uh, okay, all right. So we have a, a nomination and a second. Any further discussion? Nope. Um, in that case, all of those in favor of electing Mead Gwynn to fill the vacancy on the planning board signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Um, I would like um, to take this opportunity to ask um, all of our board members to keep your eyes open for uh, folks who may be interested in these positions. Uh, we, we always want to keep building up um, our list of options from which we can draw to nominate people for these boards. Uh, we've had pretty good luck recently um, on being able to, to fill boards with, uh, with good folks and to rep fully represent the town, uh, we want to continue to be able to do that, but we need to build this list up. So um, thank you for doing that. Uh, the next item on our agenda is appointment of chair and vice chair to the Board of Adjustment. Um, it's my understanding, staff correct me, that the chair and vice chair who currently serve wish to continue to serve? That's correct. Okay, thank you. Mayor, I'd make a motion to reappoint Jack Cooper Chair and Margaret Suppler Vice Chair. Okay, thank you. I have a motion. Is there a second? Second. I have a motion and a second to reappoint um, that chair and vice chair. Named as you heard. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Mayor, yes, before ma we go on, looking at this list, I see something that appears to be out of whack with me that we have more alternates than we do members and we're missing we have a vacancy on the board of adjustment i believe since commissioner fuller has moved up to the board that we need to fill that position so we we should currently should have five members and then four alternates or five alternates whatever but we don't have but four members and we need to have a fifth member i thought we filled that well, it's not listed on the chart. I just think that's a typo. We'll get it fixed. Who is there a fifth member? Who? Who's the fifth member? Who's the fifth member? I'd like to, to if it's filled, I, we need to get a corrected chart. But if it's not, we need to fill it. It escapes me now. Okay, well, did, did we, we move Bobby Gentry okay. from alternate? All right, okay. well, then please, we need if to you correct. Would correct that. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Thank you, sorry. Um, so we've done the uh, audit report and the PAFR. Um, any items from the town attorney? Uh, no, Mr. Mayor. Okay, thank you. Um, any items from the um, town manager? Uh, yes, sir, a couple. Um, I would like to request a closed session for two purposes. One, uh, to discuss personnel in accordance with General Statute 143.318.11A6. And then a second, I'm going to need some help from the attorney uh, to discuss property. Yeah, I think the, uh, the, mayor, uh, the manager and I have discussed it. I think the uh, second motion would be, or the second purpose would be to consider the acquisition of real property that's located at 2620 Bridge Lane, uh, pursuant to 143.318.11A5. And um, also to confer with the town attorney regarding a matter within the attorney client privilege as allowed by um, A3. The second part of that, I think, is what we need closed session. The first part of that with Bridge Lane, I think we can do an open session. Oh, okay. Um, let, let me ask uh, for the board's pleasure on this. I, d I don't know what any board members have for their Board of Commissioners agenda. I have the one item, which is the resolution um, on medical marijuana. 
and I'm wondering, can we dispose of the remaining open session items before we go into closed session? Recognizing that we may come out of closed session and take further actions. We, we may, very well may. Um, but is it the board's pleasure that we, um, before we ha um, do that, so um, I would ask then, um, can we do this um, 2620? Yes. Okay. So the next item then on our agenda, uh, before we go into the closed sessions, uh, we'll defer that momentarily, and this is consideration for acquisition of real property at 2620 Bridge Lane. Cliff. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. What, um, staff is uh, requesting that the board authorize us in our contract for the purchase of, the purchase of this property at 2620 Bridge Lane. Um, you'll find attached uh, assignment of contract, an offer to purchase, uh, and then the associated budget amendment in order for us to um, obtain this property. So the, um, I, I believe what we would need is the board, a board vote to amend the budget, um, uh, then the uh, assignment of the contract. Um, the, the price that, and forgive me, I'm pulling this up. Purchase uh, the cost. One ten. Uh, One hundred ten thousand dollars. Okay. And just say what the hundred and ten thousand includes. That's the uh, that's the cost as well as um, associated closing costs. Okay. Great. Thank you. I think that's all included in the one ten. Correct. Okay. Um, and they, I, I apologize. This 110 is the purchase price, and 115 would include all costs. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, any questions for the town manager before we entertain a motion? And hearing none, then a motion would be in order. Are you asking for a motion on the contract or the budget amendment? I, I would suggest that the first action be on the budget amendment, right. and then after that, a separate motion on the contract. <clears throat> okay. All right. So then, yes, a motion for the budget amendment to approve the budget amendment. Okay. Uh, motion to approve uh, budget amendment. The budget amendment request, um, which is budget amendment number seven, amendment 7.A. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. I have a motion and a second to approve the budget amendment. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. And now the next item would be the um, purchase contract itself. And a motion would be in order. I'd like to make a motion to approve the offer to purchase and contract as submitted before us. Yeah. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. I have a motion and a second to approve the offer to purchase and contract as presented. Any further discussion? Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Great. Thank you very much. And then the last part of this is we need a approval of a resolution to terminate um, an interphone loan agreement that was originally proposed for the purchase of this property, which is no longer necessary. Okay. Thank you. A motion would be in order to that effect. I make a motion to uh, terminate the leasing arrangement we had with NAGS Head, or, or the loan agreement we had with NAGS Head Leasing. Okay. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. I have a motion and a second to terminate the interfund loan agreement with NAGS at leasing. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Great. All right. Thank you. Is there anything else on that item, Cliff? No, sir. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, then the next item uh, would be our Board of Commissioners agenda. Do any commissioners have any items to bring before us? Commissioner Sears? No, thank you. Commissioner Cahoon? No. Commissioner Walters? Commissioner Fuller? Thank you. 
Uh, that brings us to the mayor's agenda. Um, and we have one item, which is a resolution uh, in support of the use of marijuana for medicinal purposes. Um, as is the custom, I will read that. Um, I will read that resolution aloud. Whereas medical marijuana has been demonstrated to be an effective drug for treatment of certain human ailments and whereas a total of 33 states, the District of Columbia, Guam, and Puerto Rico have approved comprehensive public medical marijuana cannabis programs as a legal and safe medical alternative for veterans suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder, traumatic brain injury, and other chronic physical, mental, and medical conditions, as well as opioid slash drug addiction for those who choose to use cannabis under the advisement and care of a private physician and Whereas current North Carolina law denies doctors the right to treat patients by prescribing mer medical marijuana, and whereas many states currently allow doctors to prescribe medical marijuana, a policy resulting in relief from pain and suffering for their patients, and whereas there is substantial evidence from a comprehensive study by the National Academy of Sciences and the National Academic Press that concludes cannabinoids are effective for treating chronic pain, chemotherapy, indu chemotherapy induced nausea and vomiting, sleep disturbances related to obstructive sleep apnea, multiple sclerosis, spasticity symptoms, and fibromyalgia. And whereas prescribed drugs such as opioids and benzodiazepines are reported to have high potential for adverse side effects and high potential for abuse and addiction which could potentially lead to hospitalization or death by the patients who consume them. And whereas the FDA continues to facilitate the work of companies interested in appropriately bringing safe, effective, and quality products to market, including scientifically based research considering the medical uses of marijuana, now therefore be it resolved that the town of Nags Head Board of Commissioners does hereby support the use of marijuana in the medical field and encourages the state of North Carolina to adopt legislation to that effect and that the state of North Carolina grant doctors the right to prescribe medical marijuana in the same way they prescribe other drugs. This the second day of January 2019. Some, some of you may recall that um, this question came up uh, during a candidate forum uh, when I was running for mayor um, and I answered that question this way in that um, both of my parents died from uh, very traumatic cancers and um, had any option been available for me to help them, we would have certainly taken that option, including uh, medical marijuana to relieve their symptoms. Um, I don't believe there's any rational reason under the care of a doctor why this should not be permitted. So any other comments? In that case, a motion would be in order. I make that motion. Okay. Second. Thank you. I have a motion and a second to adopt this resolution. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you very much. I believe now that brings us to the, um, well, other business. Is there any other business before we go to the closed sessions? Understanding that we may come out. <laughs> and have uh, a report and or other business after the closed session. Hearing none, then a motion to retreat for the closed sessions, and I'll ask uh, Mr. Lighty if he would phrase that for us, please. Yes, sir. Uh, there's three purposes for the closed session. The first is to uh, discuss confidential personal matters in accordance with General Statute 143-318.11A6. Second is to uh, consider the uh, acquisition of real property located at 6716 South Croton Highway. I believe that's the right address. Um, in accordance with uh, General Statute 143-318.11A5. And to confer with the town attorney regarding a matter within the attorney-client privilege and to preserve that privilege in accordance with 143-318.11A3. Um, Thank you. Can I have a motion from a board member to that effect? So moved. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second to go into closed session for the purposes indicated and according to the statutes indicated. 
Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. The board will be in closed session. Okay, the board is back in uh, open session. I'll ask the town attorney to report from the closed session. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The board did uh, discuss and provide some instructions to the negotiating agents regarding the acquisition of property, uh, but no other, uh, no other actions need to be reported. Okay. Thank you. Um, we've already asked for other business, so I think that brings us to adjournment if there's nothing else to be brought to the board. And we will be continuing not adjourning, correct? Uh, I'm sorry. To Thank you very much, Webb. You did that again. So we will be adjourning to the retreat, which is January the 24th and 25th, at what location? Do you have the 2621 South Virginia Dare Trail. Send us that in the link at some point. Yeah. Yes, okay. At what time? Uh, that start at 8. Yes, 8 a.m. 26, what, 21? 26, 21? 26, yes. 21. South So The board's recessing till the 24th 24. at 8 a.m. 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8 a.m. at that location. Mm -hmm. uh, so a motion to that effect would be in order? Uh -huh. Oh, so moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you.